Hello and welcome to an Impact Gamers tutorial video and this one is to get you introduced to Click Team Fusion. This lesson that I'm going to be teaching uh, is done in a way hopefully that you can follow along on your own computer while watching on a tablet or on your phone. So I'm using the free version of Click Team Fusion 2.5 and you can just download it by going to clickteam.com. If you scroll down on the page you can normally find the free edition logo here and you can download it for PC or for Mac. I'm going to be showing you how to use it in PC very similar in Mac apart from you don't have some of the clicks. Once you have it installed start it up so double click and you'll notice that when I double click I have two red circles appear. Also when I right click you'll see a blue circle appears. So to get you started, we're going to make a new application. You make games in Clicked Infusion and Applications, a longer word for app, um, and to make a new one, you can either click File and New. You can click on the shortcut here, which is a white piece of paper. You can press Control N, or on this Startup bar, you can just press New Application. But I'm going to click on File and New, and here it is. So the application itself is represented by this red circle with yellow lightning in it and then within the application you have frames. Frames are the levels of your game. Now this is the storyboard editor that we're in. There are three editors that I'm going to show you and one I'm going to make reference to. So we have the storyboard editor, the frame editor, the event editor and there's an event list editor which we won't be using today in this starter tutorial. In the storyboard editor where we are now it will list your frames and you can add more frames so you can just click insert and add a new frame if you want you can also right click and delete frames and if you add more than three frames so if I just right click on the numbers here I can quickly add them it will tell you that you have exceeded the limitations of the free version of Click Team Fusion so the full version allows you to support as many frames as you want probably there's probably a limit but uh, it's only three for the free edition so it locks us from doing things that we want to do until we undo what we last did so I'm just going to right click and delete the same is true if we start a second new application it will tell us that we can only edit one application at a time and so we've exceeded the limit so all you need to do there is right click on the application you want to get rid of and delete it so just close there close it. Um, I'm just going to delete these frames to get back to where we would be just if we had started a new application. Um, one frame and just application and if I press the plus button that's how it will look when you create it. It tells you the size of the game that, or application that you'll be making um, and a name and a password. This is We're not really going to cover this. This is for when you have levels that uh, you can reaccess through passwords. But that's pretty much all you can do in the storyboard editor. You can change orders of your levels or create new levels, delete levels, um, copy and paste levels. But we want to go actually into the frame itself and we will be adding some objects into there to create our game. Uh, several ways to do this. We can double click here to go into our frame editor. Here we are and go back to the storyboard editor. There. We can click on the grey number one, just a left click and we're there. Also what we can do, go back to the storyboard editor, we can right click and just go to the frame editor press or press control M or what we can do is if you select the frame this icon becomes active at the top here and these icons at the top are what we normally try and use just because they're close to each other to go between storyboard frame and event editor. So let's go to the frame editor now. So once you're in the frame editor um, there's a white square which represents what the player will be able to see in the game and a grey area which is everything outside of that play area as it gets called or frame area. So um, if we were to run our application now to test it out I'll just close this debug window that opens up just so it doesn't distract us and there we go it's just a white screen nothing happening. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the screen we've got a icon of the application a red circle with yellow lightning that's saying that our test application is running. Now if we click back onto Click Team Fusion, it will continue to run and some options will be locked out to us. So please, please, please make sure that you close your test application before continuing. It's gone there. 
right, okay, we need to put something into our game, and they're called objects. So we're going to click Insert and New Object. We could press Control J, we could double click in a blank area, we could right click uh, and insert, but we are just going to click at the top, Insert and New Object. Here are all the things that we can add into uh, a clicked infusion free game, and that's because we've got all objects selected. If you go into a subcategory, it will show you parts of the objects, uh, a section of the objects, a category of the objects you can add, but all objects will display everything that you can have in the free version. Anything that moves can be destroyed, um, or you can change the position or the sizing of. They're active, so we want to put an active object in to be our character. You can either double click on that or press OK. Now we have this target asking us where we want to drop it. We just left click uh, where we want to drop it. A right click will get rid of the object if we don't want to put it anywhere. So we've got an active object in the game. If we run our application, run application, there it is. And we'll just close our test application there. It won't do anything because it has no movement properties, no um, events set for it nothing so computers only do what they're told and in clicked infusion we have this properties window to allow us to change the way things look the way things move the way things behave uh, very quickly so we're going to just select movement now it's worth pointing out that this properties window can get lost sometimes you can end up pulling it off and you have to pull it back here to dock it to the right place uh, sometimes it can get unpinned so that it pops down the side and then you just have to repin it. Um, and sometimes you can close it all together. And then in that case, you have to go to View, go to View, Toolbars, and turn it back on. Or you can press Control D on the keyboard. And there it is back there. So this properties window is, whoop, and I've just moved it again. This properties window is really vital, but easy to lose. So watch out that you don't lose it. So I've clicked on the movement property, that blue running man, and I'm going to change the type of movement to eight directions. I'm not going to concentrate on any of these advanced things. Um, I'll do that in later videos. So eight directions. This is the standard kind of arcade controls of up, down, left, right, and the four diagonals. So if we click run application, the default controls are the cursor keys. So if I press left, right, up, down, or up and left, or down and right, and I can move around. Uh, you'll also see that I can also leave the screen. And that's the first issue of you making a game. You want your character to remain on screen. So let's close that. Um, just before we add our first line of code in, actually, I just want to show you where the default controls are set. A lot of students I work with want to use WASD, much more standard nowadays for movement. So you just click on your application and that loads the properties of the application here. And then you want to have a look at the runtime options. And just down here at the bottom, there's default controls. And if I press edit, you can see, you can choose joystick if you have a joystick plugged into your computer, or if you click on the X already on keyboard, it allows you to reconfigure them. So I can reconfigure them to the keys that I want. Okay. Right, for this video, we're gonna look at one final editor in depth. We've had a look at storyboard, where the frames are, or the levels. The frame editor, where you can add your objects and change their properties. And then the final editor we're gonna look in depth is the event editor. This is the way that Clicked Infusion codes. Everything is based out of a condition and then actions, which become ticks here, and that whole line gets known as an event. So a condition is if something's happening, so if the player is leaving the play area, if the player hits a bad guy, if the uh, lives reach zero. Okay, they're all all things that trigger an action happening. So you have to click on the words, new condition. The actual words themselves, clicking here won't help. Click on the words, new condition, and it's going to relate to our active diamond, which we haven't named yet. And we are going to check its position. It's not a collision with the edge of the screen. The edge of the screen doesn't count as an object. It's the position, and we want to test the position. And we want to make sure that when it leaves this white area illustrated here in a sort of in a square, if it goes out the top, the right, sorry, the right, the down or the left, then um, we want to stop it or make it bounce or make something happen. So just those four arrows on the inside of the white box on the edge. And it writes out the line for us, active leaves play area. 
So on this line, this is an important thing. We need to right click. To make a tick, to make an action, we right click. Um, if we left click, nothing happens. If we double left click, we end up in this event list editor. Um, and we don't want to be there. Uh, when we're there, we can't even run our application. It's a very limiting place to be, and it's just for ordering uh, your events. But we want to go to the event editor, and we want to right-click underneath the object we want to affect across on the condition that we're going to affect it by triggering. So it tries to leave the play area. We right-click, and here's things that we can change about it. We can change movement, position. We could even destroy it if we wanted to get rid of it. But we just want to get movement, and I'm going to choose bounce. The only realistic things to choose that make sense to a player would be to stop on hitting a wall, immediately stop, bounce, so there's a little bit of a uh, bounce back, or wrap around play area, which um, means that it will come back on the other side, the same way that Pac-Man and uh, some other games allow you to go off on the right and appear on the left. But I just want to uh, I just want to get it to bounce. Now if I run my application I'm using WSD now you can see I cannot leave this frame the play area. There we go. So that's our first line of code. So the next thing is we need to add in something that makes this a game. So we're going to go back to the frame editor. I'm just going to use the icon at the top and I'm going to insert another new object active okay and i'm clicked to put it down got the issue they look identical the names are similar it's very messy please 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 name things appropriately um, to make it easier later on so just to rename as always there's a zillion ways of doing it you can either um, right click on an object and click rename you can left click so that there's a box around it and press f2 uh, you can right click here and click rename or you can also if you select an object in its about properties you can also rename it there as well um, so i'm going to call this one uh, p1 to represent player one in case i want to add any further players and also dif differentiate it there is an object called player one which holds lives and scores so i'm just going to call it p1 and for this one um just something bad this can be the baddie oops bad now the looks to alter looks you, there's a few ways of doing it i can click on the object and uh, i can press enter or i can right click and click edit or if i double click on it or on the icon over here it comes up with this uh, image editor here. It's really basic. You can uh, open up uh, import PNGs, JPEGs, and things like that um, for a lot of the time. Just make your game with squares and improve it later. So here's a diamond. I'm going to click on the fill tool. I'm going to choose a red to represent danger. I'm going to change the tolerance up nice and high, 100 uh, to allow it to fill more than just one color type. I'm going to fill it in. I'm then just going to use the brush tool, and the brush tool is like a pen. I'm just going to give it some eyes. And maybe a, a grumpy, or no, maybe a zigzag face. There we go, a confused bad guy there. Make him a bit more angry, maybe. He looks just sleepy anyway. That's my bad guy. Uh, it's worth noting in here that there is something called a hotspot. Now a hotspot represents where all the measurements for that uh, object is going to be based from. And it's normally in the center, apart from if you enlarge an image. Now the hotspot becomes really useful when you want things to check if they're on the left or the right, or if you want to position something on screen. And that's that eye icon. To get to turn it off, you just choose another another. Uh, icon another tool um, and you can do that okay so we've got our bad guy there now nothing will happen the computer hasn't been told if I run the application if I walk into the bad guy nothing happens close the test application make sure you close it um, we're going to put in an event for this this is a really common event happens so often in games you'll always have a collision event so make sure you click on the words new condition not the gray area um, and it's if player one collisions with another object, the bad guy, okay. Now, you could have that the other way around. It could be bad guy collides with player. It doesn't matter. Clicked infusion doesn't sense whose fault it is with colliding. It doesn't really 
know about faults. So just because the bad guy's not moving currently, it won't work one way, not the other. Either way is fine. Collision between P1 and bad guy. And we'll just destroy, destroy the player straight away. So right click, destroy. We will be adding lives, but I'm gonna show you that later. So we'll destroy the player. Right, if we go back to the frame, oh, we test it first, always good to test. So if I walk into them, I'm gone. That worked. Now we want him to move. So if we go back into the frame editor and click on the bad guy, movement is under its properties as always. And for computer-based movement, we choose bouncing ball because it allows for a fluid uh, sense of movement in terms of lots of different directions already set up, allows deceleration, acceleration, all these things, all these extra options down here. And that, that's the same with the player. The player, if I click on him, has all the speed, acceleration, and stuff like that. But bouncing ball has deceleration of zero, meaning it will never stop. So I've got my bad guy selected. I'm on its movement properties. Um, and speed. Speed's a bit high, 60. I'm going to type in 30. No. Moving at start. Yeah, I want it to start moving. Now, if I run the application, you'll see he just leaves the screen. If I press F2 to restart the application, or I can press File and New, uh, he just leaves the screen. He's got the same issue as we had at the beginning. The computer doesn't understand what boundaries things need to be kept in. So we're going to the event editor, and it's the same as this rule again. It's new condition the bad guy position, test position of bad. Click on those four arrows that are on the edge, not the one inside, just the ones on the edge. If you click the one inside, it undoes the ones on the edge, so just redo the ones on the edge. And underneath the bad guy, right click, movement, and bounce. Bounce is the only thing that makes sense. If he stops, uh, he will stop, he'll not start again. So bounce. So now if we run our application, we now have a bit of a threat of the bad guy moving around. And if he touched me, I'm dead. Right, close your test application. Make sure you close your test application. We'll go to the frame editor. There's not much point to this game. There's no way of scoring it. So we're gonna insert another new object and this is gonna be something to collect. But it's still gonna be active. Even though it's not move, moving, it will be collectible, destructible. So active, pop it down. I'm going to rename it. I could press F2, I could right click and press rename, but I'm just gonna use the about properties. I'm going to double click on it. I'm gonna clear it with the white piece of paper. I'm gonna use the ellipse tool, choose a color for gold, a filled in ellipse tool. Um, and there we go. And let's say that this is worth 10, whatever's 10 credits or something. Okay, there we go. Now. I'm going to say that when we collect this, our score will increase. So I need to have something that depicts our score. So I'm just gonna insert a new object. Now this time, it's called the score object. Um, and it's not the high score object, which you might have in the full version, just a score object, press okay. Place your score on the right hand side. Scores grow out towards the left. So if I placed it here, as when it got over nine, you wouldn't see the other digits. The other digits would be written on the left. Same if it was here. So place it either in the middle, but I like placing on the right hand side, top right is where I place things for score. Go to your event editor. So new condition, again a collision. New condition, collision with another object, P1 collides with the coin. Now I'm going to add to the score. Now this represents the score, but none of the actions allow you to affect the score. The score is held within this object, as are the lives, the player one object. And hence why I didn't call my character player one, because it would have got very confusing explaining this video. So right click, score, we want to add to the score. Setting the score will just keep it the same all the time. Add will allow it to grow. And we're gonna add 10, because that's what the coin says. And press okay. Now if I run my application, you will note that the coin does nothing apart from give me points, which, is a bit of a um, a bit of a rubbish uh, gameplay mechanic. So we will get the coin to uh, destroy and be recreated. But that process of destroying and recreation isn't really needed. That would just be extra lines of codes we don't need because we could just reposition the coin. Now we'd we can reposition the coin randomly, and we could do that by setting its x coordinate. 
it's just off screen. There we go. You can just see it. it would be that one there in the magnified view. So the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, we could set them to a random range. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, select the position. Now this means it's an actual position on screen. And we could choose a position, but that would be pointless. Then it would always stay there. We can attach it to another object by clicking on it. Or if you click the relative to um, bullet point, a relative to check circle I don't know what it's called uh, you can choose which object you want to attach it to and then you can set the X and Y coordinate off its center point that action point um, there so zero zero we're gonna put it on top of the bad guy so almost like the bad guy drops a coin every time we get one so we run our application it means that the coin will go to be where the bad guy is which means we kind of chase the bad guy around making it a little bit more dangerous especially when he bounces in a straight up and down pattern, which he'll probably break in the next two bounces. Oh, there we go. Is he going to break it? Yeah, there he did. Um, you can change his security of his bounces and make him a bit more random. So we're chasing the bad guy. That's all right. That's an okay game. But another new condition, what we're going to do is we're going to put a timing event in. So we'll make it a bit harder so that every five seconds... We're going to create a new object, and create new object is under this white shiny box. So right click there, create object, and we're going to create a bad guy, and we're going to give them a spawn point. So we'll say that they spawn in the top left corner, and we could graphically put something there, a little cave or something like that, to, to illustrate to the player that it's a dangerous place to be. If I got it to spawn off the bad guy, that would, or the coin... I could get it to spawn off the coin, but we're aiming for the coin. And if it's spawning off the bad guy, once there was two bad guys, it would run this command for each bad guy, and it would create. So one bad guy would become two bad guys, would become four bad guys, would become, and so on and so on. And it would just, uh, it would get exponentially harder. So we're just going to create them in one position there. If you run your application, when we get to five seconds, nearly there, five seconds, there he is. And if you notice, the person who drops the coin is the last person to be created. That's close. Which means that I'm not following the same bad guy each time. Oh, but it's close to spawn point. Ooh. Um, right, so it's getting a bit chaotic here. Uh, ooh, and I'm dead at 150. Um, let's make some walls. So you should be able to work out now, if we go back to the frame editor, we can insert a new object and we could insert an active object to be walls. Now, what I'm going to do is not make the wall an active object. That'd be nice and simple, but the more active objects on screen, because they contain so much extra data compared to backdrop objects, it means that your game starts running slowly if you rely only on active objects. So use a backdrop object, which are far more basic. You can't collect them, you can't destroy them, but you can collide with them. So we're gonna click and put it down. I'm going to click twice, I'm going to clear it, I'm going to make it um, into a brownie coloured wall, I suppose. And that'll do. Right, okay. And I'm going to rename it so I can call it wall. Now, background objects do not affect anything in any way unless we change their runtime option and change it to either an obstacle or platform or ladder. Now, platforms and ladders are useful for platform games, but not for this style of game. Only an obstacle will do for us. If it has no obstacle type, we can just go through it. But we will say it does have an obstacle type. It's not just background. And then go to event editor. So new condition, if we collide with the backdrop, anything that's an obstacle in the backdrop, I think we should stop. And a new condition, if the bad guy collisions with another object, no, with the backdrop, sorry, collides with the backdrop, then the bad guy needs to right click there, movement, bounce. So make sure you've right clicked under the right things. If you ever make a mistake with your ticks, you can either right click and delete them, or you can drag a clear box over the top and it will overwrite it. But I'll put that back down. There we go. Now if I run my application, I've got something, a bit of wall. So let's make this a bit more exciting. 
in our frame editor, we're going to use something called the paint mode. It's a drawing mode, really, but it calls it paint mode. Click on it, click on the wall, and then we can now hold down and draw out little maybe safe areas that we can get to. And because the wall is the same size as the player or the bad guy, we would be able to fit in a, a gap of one wall, but it would be tricky for the bad guy because he's moving randomly to achieve that. Okay, so I'm going to turn off paint mode and just delete that. That was clicking on it and pressing delete on the keyboard. I could have right clicked and chosen delete as well. There we go. And to make it more exciting, I'm going to add more coins. Now I'm not going to do paint mode with this. I'm just going to pull. I'm just going to pull it in like that. So if I run my application, click run application, you can then see I've now got these walled areas. The bad guys are limited by it. I've also, with the extra coins added in, it well, allows for more than one coin to be on screen. And there we go. So to make your game restart, I'm just going to show you a final command and then we'll finish up. So under the event editor, in the event editor, we've already got a command for when we get destroyed. So collision between player one and bad guy, that causes us to be destroyed. And so that can trigger a timed event. So right click under the timer. We're going to fire an event after a given delay. So three seconds is normally a good amount of time for someone to realize that they've died and press OK. And then it wants us to name the event. Now these speech marks are really important. They um, show that there's going to be text rather than numbers. And so leave the speech marks. If you delete them by mistake, you'll get the fact there's a missing quote. Just add it back in. Shift and two on the UK keyboard. And then we'll call it restart. It could be anything. Oh, could be anything. Um, that name. But we need to reference it here. So click on the word new condition on the timer on event and the same thing restart so that it's referenced. Now, this line is only going to be triggered three seconds after this line. And if you right click on the storyboard controls, you can say restart the application. Restarting the frame will keep your score, uh, but restarting the application clears everything. So restart the application. Now, if we run our application, and if I get hit, after three seconds, it restarts and I can go again. Right, let's save the work. So file, save as, or just save if you want. It'll do the same thing the first time. And I'll give it a name, coin collector. I can call it whatever I like. So I can reload it and carry on with it in the next tutorial or the next time I'm working on it. And you can also download it from the link that's shown on the screen now. As an added bonus, I'm going to show you lives as well. So if you go back to your frame editor and you, if you insert a new object, this time they're called lives, and press OK, you can click to put them on screen. Now these shrink to the left, so I normally put them on the left-hand side of the screen, although that's the spawn point, so maybe I'll move them slightly along. Uh, you start off with three lives, and that's because in your application's properties, under the runtime options, right near the bottom, the initial number of lives is three. So we could change that to be five, and it would update here. If we go to our event editor, we can now have to change this line of code. Because when you collide with the bad guy, we're just going to lose a life. So under player, we're going to right click number of lives subtract from number of lives rather than set we're going to subtract one and to show that the bad guys hit us we want them to bounce off us now we want to get rid of this destroy right click and delete so now we've got it saying that if we get hit by a bad guy after three seconds it'll run restart we don't want that either so we're going to do a new condition at the bottom and I'll click on player one where the lives are stored because the lives aren't stored there that shows your lives but this is where the lives are stored when lives reach zero and we'll pull this tick down to save time there, and we'll pull a blank one on top. So if you get hit by a bad guy, you lose a life, they bounce off. When you get to zero, then it restarts the frame, but we also need to destroy the player. So run your application. Let's see if I can get hit a few times. Struggling, struggling even to get hit. There you go, got hit, and I'm dead. Three seconds later, restart lives 
and score reset. Perfect. File, save. And that's it for this part of the tutorial. Um, I hope that you've been able to follow along. I will do another tutorial in a similar way showing you the basics of platform games and also physics games. So there you go, a tutorial which will hopefully take you from being a beginner towards being a novice at Click Team Fusion and making your own games. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe for more videos. If there's any bits that you liked or that you're having problems with, please comment below and we'll try and get back to you. Visit our website, impactgamers.net, for some more information. And if you want to be extra specially generous, you can donate to us through the website or become a regular donor through Patreon. Don't forget you can download the file from this tutorial at impactgamers.net forward slash beginner.